This title is a little weird, right? How to think as a software engineer? Does that mean software engineers think differently? Are they some weird creatures? No. Why I put this title? Because as an architect, every single day I work with bunch of people from other architects to tech leads to senior engineers, engineers, associate engineers. I work with all of them. And daily basis, I talk to them, I check their problems and I, I analyze the, what they're doing. I review their design. I do so many things. So what I recently found out is especially the recent uh, pass out software engineers, they think if I know some few languages, if I know how Java, Node, Nest and Python, how those works and if I can work with those languages, then I'm a software engineer. No, that make you a programmer or that make you a developer. That means you can develop something, you can uh, code something, right? You can say coder, programmer, developer, whatever you like. But that doesn't make you a software engineer. If you're a software engineer, you should have engineering skills, especially problem solving, right? So this uh, video and uh, two other videos I plan to do how to think as a software engineer. That means when you get a problem, how you can analyze the problem and how you can solve it. How you can use your fundamental knowledge, what you learn, to solve this problem. The biggest reason this to happen, because most of graduates, most of uh, students in university, they think data structures, numbering system, computer architecture, those are just a subject for just focus on the exam. Because those, most of those are, uh, fall into the first, second, third semesters, right, and be in the first year. So what they do is, they learn numbering system, they learn this uh, data structures, algorithms and everything, they learn those trees, uh, graphs and everything, they master that, they go to the exam, they write it, that's it. They done and dusted, they finish it. They forget it completely. Now they focus bigger things, ML, AI, right? So data mining, big data, so huge topic because those are posh. But understand this. Every this single uh, concept work on these fundamentals. If you have this fundamental, you are so strong, right? So to do those videos, next videos, how to solve problems, how to think as software engineers, you need some basic uh, fundamental concepts, right? So you need to know how to traverse a graph. You need to know how to, uh, what's a tree. You need to know list, set and everything, right? Basic fundamental of data structures. So in this video, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to explain and I'm going to kind of recap. I'm not going to go into deeper, but I'm going to kind of recap how the depth first and the breadth first works, works right? DFS and BFS works. Why? Because I need it for my next videos, right? So rather I'm asking you to go and learn from somewhere, I'm going to explain it here, right? In this video, I'm not going to go into concept detail, but I'm going to explain how the BFS and DFS, how to perform using stack and kill. Okay, so now I have a graph here, right? So I draw this graph to BFS, right? So what the BFS mean? Breadth first. That means you go each and every layer, right? So that's why I draw this this way. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay? So now the implementation we for the implementation for this, we can use a Q, right? So Q is what? Q is a first in, first out. Right? Q is a first in. First out, right? So why first in, first out? The rule of breadth first is you can start from any vertex. There's no rule starting vertex, right? So once you start the vertex, you need to explore all the nodes what is connected to those that vertex, right? If you start from here, you need to explore every single vertex which is connected to this one. So there are two types of graphs. One is a directed graph. And another one is an undirected graph, right? So directed graph means the, the word is it says this direction only you can go, but undirected means you can go to any direction, right? No rules. Okay. So now, right, the rule is you can start from any vertex, right? If it's undirected graph, it starts from any vertex and you, you need to explore every vertex which is connected to that. So that means if you start from here, you need to uh, explore all the vertexes, right? And then you can go to the next vertex and you need to explore all the vertex connected to that, right? And go to the net, net vertex and explore uh, connected to that. So like that, that's how it goes. That's why the cube is the implementation, right? So let's see how we can do this, okay? So it's simple, it's easy. So you start with this uh, node, for example, A, right? So what I do is I put this 
a into my q. Right? I put the a into the q. So that means I am done. Right? This level, I am done. The level 0. So now what I do is, I take a out from the q. Right? I take a out from the q. If I write here, you see, right? Okay. So if I, uh, a out from the q, and then I am going to explore these things. Right? So when I take a out from the q, I can see b and c. Right? I put b and I put C into my Q, right? Do I have any vertexes? No, right? So now I'm done for that layer as well. So now, who is next in the Q? First in, first out. That's why we need the Q, right? So we take B out from the Q, okay? So you go to the B. Who is connected to the B? D is connected to the B. You put D into the Q, right? So do I have anyone else? Any other vertexes? No. Right? So I'm done with that. So now I take D. I mean, when you take the D, D already D has a connection to the B, but B is already visited. Right? So therefore we don't count that. Okay? So now we get the uh, we get the C out from the Q. Right? So now C is out. So now who's connected to the C? E is connected to the C, right? And then G is connected to the C, right? So G is connected to the C. So that's all. That's all I have. So now I'm done with that. So now I take the D out from the Q, right? So D. Who's connected to the D? No one, right? There is no one connected to the D. So therefore, I just uh, leave that there, right? And then who is the next one in the Q? E. Right? I take the E from the Q. Okay? So who's connected to the E? F is connected to the E. Right? I put the F into the Q. Right? F is connected to the Q. Uh, e. So now, do I have uh, anyone else to connect to the F? Yes? So, sorry, do I have anyone connected to the E? No. So now what I do is, I take the G from the Q. Right? G. Right? Do I have anyone connected to the G? Yes, F is connected to the G, but F is already visited, so we don't count that, right? So therefore, we don't have it, and then no one is, uh, no one else, C is connected, C also visited, right? And then we take the F, right? So this is the BFS for this graph, right? BFS for this graph, and there are some other things we can draw with this, right? But here, uh, I'm just drawing the how BFS travels work for a, uh, this type of undirected graph. That's it. And you can draw this multiple, uh, I'm, I'm going to explain the BFS again, right? But uh, BFS, you can practice multiple graph and draw this and see how it exactly works. And then you take your favorite programming language, the Java or a .NET or a Node or a Python, just say, try to implement this, right? Okay, so let's see how the uh, BFS works. Right, so this is a diagram for DFS, right, so that means depth first, we go to the depth, right, we don't uh, explore vertexes around the next level, but we go to the depth, we hang on one thing and we go to the deeper and deeper and deeper until we cannot find something, okay, so why I go in this way, because sometimes the graph looks like different, like for example, this will looks like, like this. Right? So that doesn't mean this is not a, a depth. So that doesn't mean it's a next level just because it's drawn here. Right? Or it can be drawn like this. Right? It doesn't mean where you drawn it. So don't let uh, to fool by the diagram it's given. Right? So it's perfectly fine. It's the same as even you have this in here. Right? Even in the breadth first, even in the depth first, it's the same thing. Right? Don't make you to fool by the way of his drone okay right so for the uh, for the depth first we cannot use a cube why because we need to go to the depth and we need to come back okay so this is very important you to understand so always when you uh, write some algorithm when you see why it's implement that way just get the rationality why we why we use a stack right why not the cube what the cube is Q is first in, first out. What does stack mean? Last in, first out. Right? Whoever go last, come first out. 
So in our the, the previous example, in the breadth first, you need to explore everyone in the next level. Right? So that is the nice candidate for the queue. Why? First in should be first out. Why? Because you need to out, you need to complete over the next level vertexes before you go to the uh, following level. So that means first in, first out is a nice candidate. But here what happens is, if you go here in deep, you need to come back. Right? You need to return. So that means you need to use a stack. So that's how, based on the nature of your problem, nature of the solution you're looking for, that's how you choose a data structure. Okay, so we get a stack here. Right? So as usual, I draw a stack uh, in this way because there are certain things people do, right? The stack draw in this way, queue draw in this way. No much rationality, but okay, it's fine. That's right? so you can see it here, right? Okay, cool. So now, what is the um, rule for the uh, depth first? Again, it's our directive graph, right? The rule is you can go, you can find, a, start with any vertex, but the rule is you need to follow all the adjacent vertexes and go up to the deep, most deep node of that, the branch you have on, okay? Right, so let's start with the zero, right? Right, so this is not an A, B, C, this is a zero, one, two, three, one, right? Okay, so what you do is, you, you write down the zero, and then you put zero into the stack, okay? So now you see, who is connected to zero? In this case, only one, right? So now what you do is, you take, you go to the three, and you put the three into the vertex, uh, the stack, right? For the three, you have two vertexes, five and seven, right? So it's up to you which path you take, that's fine. Right, so I mean, in general algorithm, in general uh, DFS, it doesn't say you have to go in the left or the right. You can choose whatever, right? So now, in this case, I'm choosing this part because it's a long. Okay, I mean, it's a long when I see this, but in a programmatically, you don't see this. Okay, that's fine. So now, what we are in a three, right? So what you do is you go to the five, right? I put the five into the stack. Right, and I write down the 5. Who connected the 5? 6. I put the 6 into the stack and 6 here. Who's connected the 6? 2. Right, I write the 2 in here and put the 2 into the stack. Right, who connected the 2? 1. I write the 1 here and I put the 1 into the stack. Now is a problem. Right, so 1, no one else connected to 1. Okay, so now what you do is, you start, start to reverse, okay? So now, now I take the one out of the stack, no one, right? I get the two, the next one is a two, no any other not connected. I'm the six connected, but six totally visited, right? So then next one is six, I take six out, who's connected? No one. I take five out, who connected? No one. No one me, three connected, but three visited. Now I take the three, now I have two nodes, five and seven, five visited, but seven is not visited, right? So what I do is, I put the seven is to the uh, stack, right? And then I run seven here, right? So go to the seven and see who's next. Four, right? Four is next, okay? So now I go to the four, right? And put the four here. So now do I have anyone from the four? Any vertexes from the four? No, nothing. So therefore what I can do is, I take the 4 out again, right? So now, no one, 7, no one, right? So now these are not there, so next one is a 0. 0 that means I came to the starting vertex already. So that means this is the DFS for this one, right? But if you take on this part from 0, if you take on 7, then it would be three, uh, 0, 3, 7, 4 and come back, 5, 6, 2, 1, right? So it's a different path, a different path you could take, right? But um, here, since we go in this path, so this is the uh, BFS, DFS output, right? So now, in this video, I didn't plan you to teach the concepts and the uh, fundamentals of the DFS and the BFS because it's something you have learned in your probably you know high school or probably in your university or any degree program, right? But here what I did is 
something I need for my next videos you to explain right how to choose a data structure to, uh, to solve your problem based on the nature of the problem right which is I'm going to talk in the next video so this is something uh, kind of I'm laying a ground to make sure you aware about the breadthfirst and the depthfirst at least right so now let in the next video let's see how to find articulation points and how to uh, find the shortest path and various things okay cool and then see in the next video till that stay safe